In the headlines, the Public Service Union says it is making progress in salary talks with the Air and Seaports Authority. The HTA Executive Vice President warns there is still a long way to go to get tourism back on its feet. And Pakistan defeats West Indies in third straight T20 International. I am Andrea V with the Channel 5 News. Back with the details after this. M&J Covering is the producer of designed galvanized and galvalum in Dominica. They design to your specifications, color and length, four styles of galvanized and galvalum pre-painted roofing sheets as requested and supply all your galvalum accessories. M&J Covering helps you control spending and reduce waste. At M&J Covering, they are also equipped to build your roof to precise standards anywhere on island. So come to M&J Covering at One Mile in Portsmouth or call 445-5001-275-5003 today. Do you need more cash for that home improvement? Then come to Fast Cash, where we give you more. At Fast Cash, our customers get more funds and more time to repay. But wait, can't come to us? We'll come to you, and our mobile officer will get you on your way. Small businesses, consumers, and taxi owners, Fast Cash has more for everyone. Simply call or visit any of our locations for more, smarter, faster, better. Fast Cash. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you for staying with us. First up, management of the Air and Seaports Authority met with the Public Service Union on Tuesday to attempt to continue settling on proposed salary increases for port employees. General Secretary of the Public Service Union, Thomas Leta, told Channel 5 News the union will meet with the board again on Friday and thereafter the union will meet with the general membership. He told Channel 5 News they are making progress on the matter. On the issue of the timing of demanding salary increases, later had this to say. What the Prime Minister is saying to me, to me and to all of us is if I am owing, let's say, the, 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 the National Bank or the credit union some money, and I had that commitment, that obligation to, the, to them for, for that length of time, with the passage of a hurricane, they should remain silent and do not inquire of me as to what I intend to pay or what am I doing. In other words, we can say that for any issue. I believe with the passage of the hurricane, that was the best time to get in the negotiating table. Because if you have a matter that has been outstanding four years ago, the hurricane should have provided you that opportunity to go to the table and to say, okay, I cannot give this or I can give that or let's look at this, let's, let's look at that. The PSU represents over 200 employees of DASPA. This is a union that is very responsible. And the only thing that hurts me sometimes is when people forget the different instances when you appeal to your members to make sacrifices. And even while those sacrifices was in the, were in the interest of the country, there was no level of gratitude shown towards what what, 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 what you propose, but you still go ahead and did it. And now all we will say, look, let us get to the table and discuss the issue and put it behind us. We are going to make, be making some sacrifices in the interest of the corporation, so we'll be giving full details of that after our meeting. In other top stories, the hospitality sector has been struggling to add a 10% boost to its room stock monthly as the tourism industry recovers from $54 million in damage and $191 million in losses. Idona John Baptist explains. The tourism industry needs $71 million, according to a World Bank assessment, to help revive that top productive sector for the country. Of the total stock of 962 rooms, only 393 are available since Hurricane Maria, with several being severely damaged or destroyed. Tourism authorities estimated that they will not resume operations by year's end. 
even if only 37 out of 76 properties that are members of DHTA are operating, they are doing so with limited capacity and in some cases lacking proper utilities. Executive Vice President of the Dominica Hotel and Tourism Association, Kevin Francis, says there is still a lot to be done to get the sector back to the desired level. Development is a little bit slow, you know. Um, I think the World Bank had issued a report right after um, Maria um, and it said that during, you know, every month from now until the next tourism season that we will be adding just about 10% to our room stock, for instance, you know, and um, that is was a very optimistic projection because right now uh, the, the room stock is still pretty much the same. From the look of things, DHDA considers that its members are in a precarious situation. Francis says now more than ever, the association needs to make a case for its membership. There are hotels that are completely down, you know, and maybe just the, the pillars, you know, and, and there are other hotels who are still, who are still um, up and operational, but because of the damage they, they, they had during the, the hurricane, it's best to build a new hotel. Is the DHTA concerned that there uh, may be accommodation properties that um, may not be able to rebuild at all? Of course, of course, there, there, there are partners, there are certain accommodation partners like that, you know. Um, there are certain times you, after a, a major disaster like that, now you have to really think about, you know, do I go back into this industry, you know, that is so capital intensive, you know, or do I just take what I have and, and, and leave? Well, very soon we'll be having some consultations with our members to, to determine what would be the best way and way forward right now. Six months since Hurricane Maria, hoteliers and accommodation providers have not had it easy in receiving payouts from insurance claims. A, a large obstacle to our properties and members and partners coming back is, is the settlement of insurance claims. You know, to date, right now, we have um, several properties that have not necessarily received an offer, much as for, for the settlement of their claim. Um, I think uh, the the approach by by the um, public sector or the government is to try to help as many stakeholders set up the environment so that people can be successful, and that is commendable. But um, I think a lot more emphasis needs to be placed on the individual players. But it's not all doom and gloom, though, for the accommodation sector. The THT, along with the DDA, we've embarked in this um, in a room audit. So apart from the properties that we already know are opened, we have to start looking at more creative ways, like um, properties on Airbnb. You know, the the properties that were once housing for the Ross students that are now available because Ross will not be returning soon. Um, that's also an option. And we've been calling these um, these entrepreneurs, these partners, these accommodations. We're definitely advocating for, for our members to continue to stay and uh, inviting new partners and new persons to come in to invest into Dominica. Uh, we believe that Dominica, the product Dominica will come back. Dominica's product will always come back. Still on the tourism scene, the Dominica Hotel and Tourism Association, DHTA, is set to receive a small grant from the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association, CHTA. Other monetary support is also expected through the efforts of regional tourism associations for post-Maria recovery activities. The Jamaica Hotel and Tourism Association and the Jamaica Tourist Board, through their charity fund and with the assistance of supporting member hotels, donated to the CHTA to assist with the recovery of countries affected by recent natural disasters. President of the Jamaica Hotel and Tourism Association, Omar Robinson, said they were happy that they could help their Caribbean brothers and sisters in time of need. The executive vice president of the DHTA, Kevin Francis, extended heartfelt gratitude to the CHTA and the NHTAs for their continued support and partnership. Dominica, like many other islands, was severely impacted by the 2017 hurricane. On to education, teachers around the country will learn their role in climate resilience when the DAT hosts its biennial conference on Wednesday. The Dominica Association of Teachers will host its fourth biennial conference under the theme Building Back Better, Dominica Association of Teachers Equipped for the Challenge. The Minister of Education, he'll be there for remarks and also the Minister 
for labor and I know that the government has taken this bold initiative of building back better and making Dominica be the first climate resilient country in the world. We had a conference with, um, well more or less a conference, a, a workshop sort of with Sedima and the um, Caribbean Development Bank. They are both an Israel Aid and UNESCO. All these institutions are going to help the Ministry of Education to make our education sector very resilient. Nicholas says teachers are well poised to develop resilience in the country through teaching the youth and pointed out that the topic of climate resilience has been discussed in schools for several years. We know that if the, the education sector is very important, is key, if I may say so, so to the development of any country. So it is wise to start with us. And he, of course, initiated that the teachers would have to make a sterling contribution towards that. Of course, the teachers are always ready to help, but of course, they have to be equipped and to be advised and to be informed. Somewhere along the line, somebody may, I don't know, inadvertently feel that um, disaster preparedness and climate resilience, you know, and all these topics are not discussed at school. I mean, these things have been discussed at school. It's part of the syllabus. Other highlights of the conference are the recognition of 15 former teachers and the election of a new executive. Nicholas had told Channel 5 News she will not seek re-election as president of the DAT this year. You are watching the Channel 5 News. A local politician says not enough attention is being given to vulnerable populations. That and more after the break. Rudolph Thomas Enterprise in Portsmouth, your suppliers of building materials and hardware products. Over 20 years experience in the business. Rudolph Thomas has lumber and plywood, galvanized and fence pipe. Check out Rudolph Thomas for ceramic and vinyl floor and wall tiles, nails, nuts and bolts, paint and painting supplies. And check out their line of electrical and hand tools. Go now to Rudolph Thomas on 1240 Bay Street in Portsmouth. If you're HIV positive or have an STI, having unprotected sex with multiple partners puts them in grave danger. You'll expose every partner and their present and future partners to HIV or another STI. Use a condom every time you have sex. You can live a productive life even if diagnosed with HIV. Remember, early detection is key to your survival. Be responsible, protect yourself and others. Help stop the spread of HIV and other STIs. Welcome back. The government of Dominica is on a drive to reduce the country's importation of wheat flour by 20% in two years. That's one of the goals of introducing a new type of cassava to the local market. Traditionally, Dominica grows the bitter variety which is used to make farine and cassava bread. Technical officer in the Division of Agriculture, Ryan Anselm, explained that the new sweet variety of cassava could be used for a wider range of products. We want to add more value to the cassava. And so we're going to import new varieties, that is the sweet variety. And so we can move to another level where we'll do a mash that will help us do composite bread. So we, the whole intention is to substitute wheat flour. Mm -hmm. So our aim is to substitute the importation of wheat flour by 20% in the next two years and 40% in the next five years. And so we have placed that target that we want the bakery owners to use mash cassava in the bread. And it's, it's, it's possible because they are doing it in Barbados. They have started it in Trinidad and Guyana and in, in Suriname. And some says there are also plans to improve the value chain of the cassava industry so that byproducts of the crop can be put to greater use. In everything you do, you need to improve. And so there's a lot of wastage. Um, for example, what do you do with the, with the, with the water when you, the starch? Um, can we use that um, for, for ironing, as, uh, for example? Um, they are doing beer production in Jamaica. Red Stripe is substituting some of the cassava to do beer. 
And so these are all value addition that we're looking at. Um, we may not go into the beer, but um, in, 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 in cottage system, small cottage system, um, if you want to, you have a, a, a community, you can do your own beer on a, on a small level. So these are the areas that we're looking at and, and, and introducing new technology, for example, planters, um, harvesters, how we can improve the, the whole production system. In just last month, a delegation from Colombia wrapped up a fruitful visit with the government of Dominica, where Colombia agreed to, among other things, provide support to Dominica on its quest to develop its cassava industry. And Member of Parliament for the Roseau Central Constituency, Joseph Isaac, believes more emphasis should be placed on vulnerable populations in society as the country bounds from Hurricane Maria. Isaac commended the level of recovery in the country six and a half months after the monster storm, but believes some of the recovery works could have happened in a shorter space of time. Um, my biggest concern is really about the pace of implementation. I think we could have done a lot more faster, mm -hmm. in more speed. Um, some things have been done, mm -hmm. but I think if we can increase the speed of implementation, I think we'll achieve a lot more. The, the weather mm -hmm. condition changes from May. So, um, so I'm very concerned about that. I think what we should do now is try to see who really needs direct support immediately to, uh, to, 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 to speed up the process. And the more critical people, like our senior citizens, people who don't have a, a, an option of, let's say, insurance and or family to help them. I think we need to look at their housing needs and to bring them up to par as soon as possible. As regards the private sector, Isaac is of the view that greater support could have been lent to this sector post-Maria. Speed again, we could have done much better. Um, I still think, again, we can go back to the joint board and try to improve on that um, because the private sector needs significant support. There are always challenges, you know, but that's why our job is to surpass, surmount, circumvent mm -hmm. challenges, you know. We cannot say because there's a challenge, mm -hmm. we don't do sound like we get an excuse. We should be doing things, bringing teams together, bringing people with different ideas and to get solutions. Mm -hmm. So the job is really to get solutions, to implement them so that the people that we're trying to be targeting can get the, 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 the impact of what we're trying to bring to them for the housing, for business support, for trying to ensure that in terms of the society and a whole is better. The Roseau Central MP says there should be better collaboration among stakeholders in order to develop a more secure Build Back Better plan for the city of Roseau and its environs. That's news. Stay tuned for your sports highlights with Kenny Williams. First up in sports, West Indies suffered a 3-0 defeat to Pakistan to give them an 8-wicket win on Tuesday. The Windies elected to bat first and scored 153 for the loss of 6 wickets. Andre Fletcher led the way for his team with a decent 52. Dennis Ramdin closely supported with an unbeaten 42. Set 154 to win, Pakistan only lost two batsmen to take the win and finish on 154. Baba Azam scored 51 and Zaman 40. Next up, the national football team continued their unbeaten run under the leadership of coach Rajesh Lachu when they finished nil all in Sunday's friendly against Antigua. The team suffered from poor performance in the past when playing outside games, but since Lachu's instatement as head coach, the quality of play has shown notable improvement. I am proud of the team for not having lost the game. It is a good effort by them. We still have some things we want to improve. It would be better if we had won the game, we had chances, um, but we showed that we stuck to some of our object objectives in defense to be resilient because that is, you know, what the people of Dominica are. They are resilient after Maria and they showed that they could come back on today in this Easter Sunday when 
Jesus Christ was resurrected, we also wanted to show that we could resurrect the football too. And the players went out there and they played with that body on the line effort and they gave a hundred percent. Thus we came away not losing and we drew the game nil nil. We should have come away with a win, but we accept the fact that we have not been unbeaten. So all countries know it is very difficult to get past us. Looking forward to the 2018 CONCACAF League, Lachu says it's back to the join board for the team as they prepare for the next major competition carded for September. We can discuss different things that they would need to improve on for the near future going into the CONCACAF. Um, the good news is we have some time. We will continue to monitor them. Um, they, as long as we continue to get the support, which we have been getting from the DFA and the coaches have been doing good work with the teams locally, we'll be able to take it to the next level so that when we reach CONCACAF, you know, Suriname, we will beat Suriname. You know, so this is what we're looking forward to continue to build. We continue with this item where national boxer Roy Cook is pumped up ahead of his stint at the 2018 Commonwealth Games in Australia. Cook noted training in England and Australia played a major role in his preparation for the Games. I had um, a few weeks in England training, preparing for the Games, which I strongly needed, I would say. I needed a bit more, but I feel love for bread is better than none, so... I'm feeling confident and I'm feeling happy that I got the chance and the opportunity to represent my country. Boxing requires a lot more training than the average person thinks. It, it, your, it takes a lot to be a boxer. Like you have to be on it 24-7. You have to have a certain amount of fights. You have to get certain quality types of sparring. And it has to be something that's going on all year round to, in purpose to prepare for a, a, a games like this. So I think what I have did, I think it's better than doing nothing so I'm happy with myself and I'm feeling confident so that's the most important thing. Cook says he is not intimidated by the other boxers he might have to face in the ring and noted work with his new coach has borne fruit. I have no fear I'm just going to fight and represent my country that's what I'm there for so that's the mission at hand. So I don't I, I have no fear for no country no name it's between me and you in the ring so that's all it is. I think he has done a great job. I, mean, if I actually needed to work with him based on him going into the room with me. I needed to get some sort of connection with him, which I think we did. And he's a good coach. He, can I say he's a, he's a great coach, actually, I believe. So it's just a matter of going and get the fight done now. Meantime, Chef de Mission for Dominica pointed out DOC is putting things in place to ensure a smooth experience for athletes at the Games. Things have shaped up very well. I was actually the first um, Chef de Mission in the village on March um, 20th. So I, I've definitely paved the way uh, um, for the team you know, to arrive in the village. Preparation has been great. Um, I have done a lot of networking. I've, uh, I've laid the groundwork for a lot of the officials and the athletes, so now it's time for them to um, step up and you know, uh, um, take responsibility for their sport. Hopefully after these games, we could sort of reassess everyone and see how we can go uh, um, forward. But for sure, um, it, it's improvement on their um, past performances, and we're expecting um, big things from the athletes. On to track and field where national thrower Trinis Hamilton secured the only two medals for Dominica at the 2018 Curifta Games in Bahamas over the weekend. Hamilton secured two bronze medals in the girls on the 17 shot put and the discus throws. The 14 year old threw a distance of 33.58 meters in the discus and 13.4 meters in shot put. She encouraged budding athletes to stay motivated in order to be successful at their sporting discipline. My name is Trenis Hamilton. I am from the island of Dominica. I am 14 years old and I want to say how happy I am to get a bronze medal. How happy I am to get a bronze medal in one of my favorite events. I just want to say no matter what, you never give your dreams because you can do big things one day. Despite no other athlete meddling, Dominica had two personal best performances on the track. Tia George had a great showing in the 100 and 200 meter races. However, national sprinter Daniel Sun Mahote couldn't compete in neither the 100 nor 200 meter events due to injury. Moving on to cycling, we can tell you that Kohath Baron won the sixth cycling race for the year, his third win in the series so far. 
Byron crossed the finish line in 3 hours and 16 minutes, followed by Levi Byron 3 hours and 25 minutes, then Chester Leta 3 hours and 30 minutes. Koha's time was the fastest for local riders along the route. All three racers are members of the recently formed Street Falcons group. Sunday's race was from Woodbridge Bay to Portsmouth and back. Meantime, Bram Sanderson is set to make history for Dominica by being the first cyclist to compete in the Commonwealth Games. The national cyclist says he is honored to represent Dominica at the competition. I'm now training with uh, the Kenyans. Yeah, it's a privilege, it's an honor. Um, my coach now is David Kinja. Um, I have no, no second question about it because uh, most of us might not know, but in history he has been the first cycle coach for the world's number one, Christopher Froome, and it's an honor for me to be part of his um, his teachings and to absorb as much as I can absorb. So I have accepted to be with him until my competition has come. So I'm in good hands, I could say, and I'm just willing to learn and willing to do my best, you know, so I have to be humble and take my time. You, if you ride back at home before you, you reach like seven kilometers, there's a hill. So um, most of Australia is flat, so it's a much quicker course. Uh, the roads are much smoother, but in my favor, the course that we are riding have a few hills. Uh, they start about seven percent and peaks about twelve percent gradient. Um, each of them is just about maybe five hundred meters long, but in in the course, both time trial and the road race, there are about three hills two in the in the time trial and and three in the road race so i'll have some I'll have some comfort so far you know knowing that it have some hills but you don't you don't know how they're going to execute but i'm i'm quite pleased to see that in the course there's a bit of hills that i can take advantage of that's all the sporting highlights for now i am kenny williams join us next time To end the news, the headlines again. The Public Service Union says it is making progress in salary talks with the Air and Seaports Authority. DHTA Executive Vice President warns there is still a long way to go before tourism gets back on its feet. And Pakistan defeats West Indies in third straight T20 International. Feel free to contact us at news at marpin2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Andrea Lee, and to all of our viewers around the world, thank you so much for watching. Join us tomorrow.